In our independent variables and dependent variables lesson, we learned that with an equation that has the variables x and y in it, like this, the x in it is the independent variable, and the y is the dependent variable. In this video, however, we are going to learn about how the equations relate to charts, Cartesian planes, and Cartesian coordinates. What's more is that we'll get our first glimpse into how these topics are related to each other. A linear equation is an equation between two variables that produce a straight line. In order for the line to be straight, the linear equation always has an exponent of 1 on the variables. Since this is the same as having no exponents, we can just write the equation without any exponents at all. But we must remember that if we see an exponent of 2, for example, this is not a linear equation right off the bat. Also, a square root on the variables, which is the same as having an exponent of 1 over 2, makes the graph nonlinear as well. A linear equation in its most basic form is a perfect one-to-one -one relationship, where if x is a number, y is the same number. The equation for this would be y equals x. As we can see, if we plug in any number for x, y would simply take on that exact same value. So if x is equal to 0, then y is also equal to 0. And if x is equal to 5, then y is also equal to 5, and so on and so forth. However, some other linear equations are a bit more sophisticated. Let's take a look at the equation that we looked at in the beginning of the video. In this linear equation, if we put 0 in for x, notice how our y value is not automatically equal to 0, as was the case in the equation of y equals x. Instead, we are first required to multiply the 0 value with 2, and then add by 1. Thus, when x is equal to 0, y is equal to 1. And what if x was equal to 5? Well, then y would be equal to 10 plus 1, making it 11. Awesome! So, notice how the chart and the equation communicate similar information to us. Of course, the chart isn't as specific as the equation, since the equation accounts for all situations of every single possible value of x and its corresponding y value. This chart could have been a little bit more elaborative, for example, by adding another row of information. When x is equal to 3, y is equal to 7. There's also no reason for the chart to use only whole numbers on the x column. For example, what would y equal to when x is, let's say, equal to 0.5? Well, the answer is 2. We know this to be the answer because all we have to do is plug in 0.5 for x in the equation and simplify, and we would get the 2 that we see over here. Great! As we can see, this piece of information in our table of values makes it a bit more informative for us. Nonetheless, we know that the equation is still far more descriptive than our table could ever be since with just this one equation, we can put in any number for x and find out what y value it would obtain. Again, this table does not have the y value written out for 4.893, a completely random x value that we could have thought of just right now. But we can always use the more informative equation to find the value of y when x is equal to 4.893. 893. Thus, when we plug it in and simplify, we get 10.786 as our y value. Awesome! So now that we realize that both the table of values and the equation are two ways to express the same information, 
Let's open up our minds to yet another method of information that helps us to capture the same information, but in a different way. We would commonly know this as a graph, but in math, we like to call it a 2D graph, a Cartesian coordinate system, or a Cartesian plane. In a graph, we call this line the x-axis, and this line the y-axis. This right here would be the point where both x and y are equal to zero. And we call this the origin. This graph gives us the relationship between x and y in a visual way. For example, if we had a line like this, then we would immediately notice that as the x values increase, the y values increase as well. This immediately shows us that this is a graph where when there is an increase in the values on one axis, the values on the other axis increase as well. Sometimes we'll see graphs that are drawn like this instead. This time, as we can see, when x increases, y decreases, a completely opposite relationship. So. How does the line graph on the Cartesian plane fit in with both the linear equation and the table of values anyways? Well, let's pull up the earlier example where we had both the equation and the table of values. To represent this information graphically, we can just take every single one of the points on the table of values and map them out on the graph. For example, we can plot this on the graph by looking for an x of 0 and a y of 1 and plotting a point where the values meet. We can also map out this set of information onto the Cartesian plane by looking for the x of 0 0.5 and then looking for where it intersects with the y of 2 to plot out a point which is right over here. And if we did this for all the x values on the table, we'd get this straight line on the Cartesian plane, like so, which is why we call this equation a linear equation. Awesome. Now one cool thing to note is that if we look at the x and y values of the chart, any of these couples can be called a Cartesian coordinate if you write it down like this inside brackets and with a comma in between. A coordinate is always written with the x variable first and then the y variable coming after it. So now that we've got an understanding of how table of values, linear equations, and graphs can all be methods of communicating the same information to us, let's try some questions together. This question asks us if the coordinate 6 12 is a part of the equation y equals 4x minus 1? Well, the correct answer is no, and the way we can find this answer is fairly easy. All we would have to do is plug in 6 into the equation and see if it actually does yield 12. But when we do plug it in, we can see that this part becomes 24 minus 1, making y equal to 23. So the coordinate that does exist for this equation would have been 623, making the coordinate 612 just a random point below the graph. Great! Lastly, let's see if we can do one more question together. Is the point 34 a part of this line graph? Well, the answer to this is no. Since when we look at the point in which x is equal to 3, we can see that the y value is equal to 1, making 3, 4 a point that is above the graph. Awesome! Well, now that we've got an understanding of how a table of values, a linear equation, and a graph are all closely related to each other, we encourage you to move on to our next lesson on the introduction to slopes, since it's a very important topic to learn, especially for our future concepts. So we hope to see you guys in that lesson, but until then, have a good one.